Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want music. I'm Mandy from Two Round Robins and I hope you're ready for an introductory look into the wonderful world of tape. So welcome to the first two episodes that are going to be based around tape. In this one, I thought it'd be great to talk a bit about using tapes, cassettes, micro cassettes, players and whatnot, and looking into their degrading quality in the making of, let's say, ambient music or formless music. Although I mentioned in my previous episodes how OP1 was my first groove box that helped me into the world of creating ambient music, my love for textures and creating that nostalgic sound has actually started by experimenting with tape. I was inspired by the likes of Heimbach and Amulets and their use of tape loops for creating a snippet of time captured on a rather forgotten medium. So I visited my hometown and there in my room I found an old micro cassette player or recorder, uh, aka a dictaphone, uh, that I had as a kid. Uh, Sadly it didn't really work, but once I took it apart I noticed it had a pretty common problem with old tape media. The belt within the motor disintegrated, so I had to use some DIY tricks to get it working again. This then sparked my interest into tapes. So, let's talk about them. Let's start with the lovely world of tape-based dictaphones. Of course, now you can just use your phone or even a small digital recorder. However, in order to get you to get that lovely lo-fi aesthetic and be very purist about it, you gotta hunt for one of these. And these are not really that expensive. I saw quite a few on eBay and Facebook Marketplace that were as low as like 4 euros. And almost all of them have some micro micro cassettes to go with them. And from my own experience, um, finding these pesky cassettes is the main problem. I usually have to hunt them, you know, at the local flea market. But anyways, let's take a look into the nostalgic quality of these tapes. As you can see, just by looking at the size of these cassettes, they're very small, so the tape is very small. So the frequency spectrum, the dynamic range and everything wasn't really made for any high fidelity sound, uh, but mostly was used to record quick snippets on the go. Plus, Plus, I'm pretty sure the age of the tape has its own rusty factors within. So let's try it. So um, just for a couple of, uh, for the background, I basically recorded a piano sample, which I'm gonna play now. And as you can hear, the degrading quality is right there. However, if we if we go back, we can do basically um, a half speed, which is always, like Heimbach says, the best speed to go about it. So let's try to listen to that, and you can see it. It's really bad. But it's wonderful. I absolutely love it. Now I'm pretty sure that the motor is not calibrated to this speed and because of the replaced belt is a bit wobbly, which creates this rather unstable playback and tape wobble. But for me, this is part of the charm. Now, of course, with micro cassettes, you can just re-record them on or, uh, you know, do whatever you wish with them when it comes to finding that sound that you wish. I believe that if you record it in half speed and then play it back, it, it degrades the quality even more. Uh, and then you you can do if you're, uh, you know, if, if you really hate yourself, you can do a micro cassette loop 
which I've done here, uh, and you know, lose a couple of marbles in the process. So you can basically do this as well. Okay, so let's move to another medium. So next, becoming a big boy, I was ready to move from micro cassettes to more standard cassette tapes, and these come in a variety of quality, etc. But most importantly, they're not completely a dead medium. As you can see here, I have some more modern releases on cassettes, and the popularity of this medium ties in with the whole sonic ambient community quite nicely. However, finding a decent player is a whole other story. Some people use cassette decks, some people use multi-track cassette recorders, or even a more portable option like a Walkman, for example. This is a very old Walkman from the 80s. It works completely fine. You put a cassette in and you can play it. Basically, I, you know, you have your fair share of noise, but I really like it because it has this really lovely 80s aesthetic to it. However, you know, there's nothing a lot you can do with this rather than just listen and play back the cassettes. However, I found, let's say, for example, uh, this gem here. This is a Sony, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure uh, what, which type it is. I, I, I didn't read do my homework but this sony uh cassette player or walkman or, or whatever recorder has become one of my favorite go-to gears when trying to find that lo-fi texture and whatnot so uh the thing is the one thing that you really uh, want to see in a cassette player if you want to do music when it comes to the creating the the sound and creating some new textures is speed control now this one you know it has a speed control here and it has you can basically change it to a half time speed playback here also a good thing about this that it has a rather uh, rather bad microphone here but still very usable if you're using or doing whatever and you can basically record it through this little mic input here and then uh, you know play it back and do whatever so there are a couple of things that you can do now um just for the sake of of whatever i'm i have just put a cassette there into this little portable portable player and it's basically the same piano uh, piano uh, loop that we have tried before now what we'll try to do is we'll try to play and see what happens and how the quality starts you know shifting from that far more uh you know quality based sample and now that it's printed in the cassette does it sound worse or better or you know just different And of course we can we can of course try by going half speed or even you know double that by changing this as well so let's try it with half speed and see you know what sounds do we get lovely now if your particular portable uh, little um, cassette player doesn't have these options of changing the speed which again is quite an important thing when you start doing this stuff uh, you can mod it yourself there's there's ways of doing it so this is my butchered attempt or botched attempt here this is my so-called ugly boy and it was one of my first portable cassette players that I basically had to modify. Now, of course, those that are normal and, you know, know what they're doing, they usually, you know, either hook up the encoder somewhere here or either have it here and just, you know, try, try to be, so it's a bit more aesthetically pleasing. But me with limited knowledge and uh, not 
being very into aesthetically pleasing things as you can see here i had to you know i created this rather uh, with hard wires and tape i created a little control speed here and if you press play you can basically see that it's either going faster or slower so of course you can basically create your own modification when it comes to that now for some more uh, serious uh, attempts you can go into the whole world of uh, multi-track recording on a tape so let's see what that is all about so for more serious work and i do mean that very loosely you can use a four track tape recorder like the one that i'm using here task and porta studio 2. this one is modified by having a speed knob here and a kill switch so the advantage the advantage of doing stuff on this tank as opposed to doing it on a small you know cassette player recorder is basically you can use up to four tracks in which you can record uh, modify to your own liking and stuff like that now i do have a uh, a cassette loop here so this is just a normal tape loop i made made some time ago and we can just take a listen to see what do we have so we have some obviously some pianos going on and of course you can change the speed and now I opened up the second the second um, track and as you can hear you can do the same thing with the third track and all that now as I remember doing making this tape loop I don't really have the you know the idea of um, of creating something that's you know that's meant to be played simultaneously but i think here with this piano i can hear it i think you're meant to play it as one after the other so you can make a little chord progression by doing this so let's say for example like this So something like this and basically you play along with it so you you just made like a rather longer tape loop by using all the four tracks on the tape so yeah this is this is pretty great to use as uh, you know having like different tape loops or just as a tape player for something like it's not the best quality but then again you know me i'm not really a hi-fi boy i'm more of a lo-fi freak so you know stuff like this really i'm just checking out what the other uh what other tape loops i have or i made so uh, for those that are interested in tape loops we're gonna we're gonna talk about them on the next episode and we're even gonna try to create one ourselves even though there's like loads of tutorials it's like the obligatory tape episode you you gotta talk about tape loops at some point right <laughs> okay now of course we can talk a bit but about tape and before we move on to other mediums uh, I think it's great if we talk a bit about another thing. When we're talking about speed, there's, there are also options, you know, how to control speed to your own advantage. And I don't really have a lot, but I do have something. So let's just take a look into that. So you can even modify and make something like this. This is my attempt at the Reach Burnet design of a cassette tone. I made this for Maggie, but I do use it sometimes. The only problem with this is that the cassette player is in such a piss poor quality that it's almost that it's very awkward doing whatever with it. 
So I'll have to change this part in the future sometime. But just as an example, let's just, let's just talk about how a cassetton works. Basically, it's like a Mellotron of sorts. By pressing the different keys here, you're, create, you're basically changing the speed of the tape, as well as basically changing the, um, the pitch by changing this knob here. So uh, let's just try to see how this works. It's probably going to be very bad because the thing is, it, it it's like I said, it's not in the best quality, but you know, let's give it our best shot, right? Uh, there we go. So it's very flimsy. Try not to. <laughs> So yeah, like you hear, it's not, it's, it's very, very shit. Let's be honest. It's, it's not great, but, uh, you know, there is something fun just by pressing the keys and going up and down and trying to see what melody you can do with this. Of course, uh, there are a couple of things that you can try. You can basically try just using a, uh, so this is a, a, a very bad loop I, I made. Uh, uh, I made uh, sometimes it's basically just one note so you can um, basically change. yeah so you can play it I guess a bit um, if this wasn't so noisy and if I actually bothered to create a tape loop that has a, seam, a seamless loop, so there's not that gap in between. Uh, you can basically very easily make something that's that's very useful rather than, you know, whatever <laughs> this is. But it does look pretty and it does look nice, I, I think. And this thing uh, came off, so that's, that's not a good thing. It's just my very DIY, very, very bad DIY basic skills. So yeah, so this is the uh, cassette tone. And before we end our video, let's just take a look into one extra medium of tape that you can try to get your fingers into. So before we end our video, let's just take a look into real to real. My mom had this thing as a child. It's a geloso, uh, geloso, or I don't know what's the pronunciation, uh, reel to reel tape recorder and basically a player. And it took me way, way too long to get this thing fixed or into a somewhat workable condition. So I could basically just digitize this tape into a so into some medium or into a digital medium so the thing is this thing is not working it's absolutely bad but you know once i fixed it and tried to try to play with it and stuff like that i really grown to love the whole real to real experience so you know with um with a bit of searching and you know having a bit of patience i managed to find something that i rather like and it's uh, far more portable than the one beforehand so this is a portable reel-to-reel -reel tape a player and recorder made by sanyo it's a pocket quarter or a pocket quarter uh i think it's mc2 and as you can see it does have uh, two, two reels so reel to reel it has a speed option and it has the option of recording and playing back and both uh, the recording and playing back is not great it's rather rather bad uh, I, I try to fix it fix it as much as possible and try to service it just to see to what do i you know to what quality i can get it working to so functionally it works fine i just think that the um the tape here is so bad that it's basically destroyed 
<laughs> any any sort of having this thing in a more listenable condition. However, you know, just by uh, checking it out, it's not great, but it is something. It's not an Agra, but it does have a very, very lovely charm to it, especially with the whole um, motor jumping, making the whole pit jump. And the frequency spectrum is, um, I think, narrower than my job options after majoring in arts. But I do absolutely love this thing. Uh, I find it very charming, I find it very good and interesting um, and I'm, I'm going to continue to use it no matter, you know, if, uh, if it's jumping up and not being very subtle about it. So yeah, there you go, a brief look into the wonderful world of tape and their players. Next episode, we're going to cover tape loops and how to make one yourself. So I do hope you will join me on that adventure. If you like this type of content, be sure to sub if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel out and lets me have enough confidence and courage to continue uploading on a weekly basis. Like if you like, leave a comment and most importantly, have a great rest of your morning, evening, whenever you may be watching, and take care.